All right, before we get into today's video, I want to cover a couple of things. We've got a lot of different videos. I say we, when I mean me. <laughs> we have a couple of different video things coming up soon. See, this sticker here you're going to see on a bunch of the bikes, TRC Adventures. So we're going to be doing a bunch of uh, off-road and uh, sort of street and off-road adventures this summer. So uh, I want you guys to stay tuned for that. So if you can, <clears throat> which will really help me out, hit that uh, that subscribe button down there. When you, you can also hit that little bell button and that will get you notified. You don't have to hit that, but if you want to get notified of upcoming videos, hit that little bell button and that subscribe button. The subscribe button certainly helps me out. I would absolutely appreciate that thank you so much subscribe 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 all right enough said on that all right guys this is the ktm 690 enduro r this is a 2016 i have a little bit of a walk around video on this bike but i have made a couple of changes so one of the changes which i take on and off are these racks the tusk racks uh they actually have a mechanism on these racks to keep your luggage if you've got like hard luggage you it has a quick release system so you can see here i actually don't use it for that i use it for soft luggage so it just kind of keeps it away from going under the wheel or hitting the exhaust on the other side <clears throat> I take them off when I'm, normally when I'm not using them, I'll just take them off. And uh, let's see, the other little thing I did is on this rack here, which is um, super nice, it's aluminum, I threaded the two holes here so I can put a rotopax there, and instead of adding the fuel tank under the seat, which I did on my last one, I am running a two-gallon rotopax when I go for a long travel, uh, if it's... 200 and some odd miles between stops I carry the rotopack <clears throat> or between gas the other thing that I have done on this is the wings exhaust I changed out from the FMF exhaust to the wings exhaust so those are some changes I made to this motorcycle since we last saw it today we're going to go over some uh, things that I think there are little misconceptions about this bike and some maybe misleading things about this bike and why people might hate it all right now that we're on the bike a couple of things i'd like to mention is just how tall this motorcycle is i'm six foot tall and i am just tippy toed on this bike so there's no flat footed it's hard to get your foot over the seat if you've got hip problems that's going to be a, a big deal right uh now you actually see my trail tech here <clears throat> my trail tech has started up and you can see sort of the uh, the way the mapping works here. Hopefully you can see that anyways. Um, and you can see some points of interest. And you see the blue line there. And that blue line is what you end up following when you're using this GPS. It's pretty darn cool. But it is not turn-by-turn -turn navigation. You've got some screens here to go through. So uh, I don't hook up all this other jazz. I mean, it's got stuff for, you know, you can have it with your RPMs. You can have things for temperature. Um, the miles per hour works off GPS, so that's really cool. It tells you your elevation. Uh, it'll, it's going to give you the trip, how far you've gone once you've turned it on. And uh, that's pretty helpful because this is more accurate than that. Uh, that shows you your satellites, how many satellites you're getting, and there's a media screen. So you could connect your, uh, I don't even understand why they even have this. Why would you connect your phone to this when your phone can, if you've got all the headsets in your helmet, it's probably a Senna, a Cardo, and those also connect to your helmet. So this is just useless. I, I just don't get it. Um, maybe somebody does. Hey, if you get why they do that here, other than just, uh, being an added feature, you know, comment down there and let me know because I'm, completely confused to why you would ever want that um anyway uh let's see what else we got here um that just has your average speeds max speeds things like that uh there's little icons here is the buddy system if i had buddies out here you would see where they were on the map which is kind of cool all right let's get started with a little bit of a ride here Here we are in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm gonna do parking lot exercises, hopefully with every one of these bikes I review. Um, 
So the first thing I'd say about a parking lot is if you are vertically challenged with this bike, it's difficult to touch the ground, but it's not that big of a deal. You can just hang a cheek off the uh, seat and then just put one foot down. All right, no big deal, but it's worth mentioning. And then most dual sport bikes are fantastic in parking lots. Super easy to make uh, U-turns. Super, super easy, right? Okay, one of the things you're gonna notice with this bike is first gear is set pretty high. So even for like off-road use, uh, you've got to modulate the clutch. Uh, let's see, first gear at a reasonable pace is this right here without modulating the clutch. So making those U-turns, I'm pulling the clutch in about halfway and doing a little bit of modulation with the clutch. Or as they say, riding in the friction zone. And uh, other than that, I mean, really easy. But all dual sports are going to have in the same category. It's easy to manage the uh, turns in parking lots. They've got plenty of clearance, so they lean over really easily. Makes it for a very easy bike to learn on, as far as, I'm saying dual sports in particular. Not saying to go learn on a KTM 690, though you could. Um, let's see, what else we got? So, the gearboxes on these 690s and the Husqvarna 701s are pretty good. I'm going to say a little bit finicky. They're not the best in the world because they do get you get some false neutrals, things like that, especially when they're new. Um, you get a false neutral up in uh, fifth gear, which is kind of weird. Uh, they're a little bit clunky, uh, but they I think it's because the gears are cut to be strong, not to be super smooth. Um, that's enough said there, I guess. I think we want to hear this bike a little bit, but we're going to go up to the uh, road where it's a little bit windy. We'll talk about how it handles. All right, we made it out to the windy road here. This is out in. So everybody asks, "Hey, where, where do you, where's this road?" So this road is part of Mines Road here. We'll follow Mines Road up for a while. This is in Livermore, California, and we follow Mines Road up, and it take. There's a, actually a turn off to stay on Mines Road. We keep going straight. We go up to Dalval Lake. We actually don't go all the way to the lake. We go up to the top of the hill, turn around, and come back. So that's where I'm doing these test rides for all you police officers. <laughs> Anyways, let's give her a little bit, kind of hear what she sounds like. Hopefully you can hear that. That's why I like this wings exhaust better than the... Uh, an FMF exhaust on here first. And I, just, I don't know, you know, it's a different sound. Uh, some may like it. Uh, there's a main reason I added this Wings exhaust other than sound, and that is it's a little bit shorter. And it just looks a little bit more out of the way. It won't touch my luggage. So I swapped over. If you look down at my tachometer, you'll see a little light blinking. And that light is the ABS light. And uh, there's a KTM dongle. Then you put that dongle in and you can set the ABS how you like it. And it'll stay that way. Every time you start it, turn it off. It always stays the same. So I have it set to the ABS on in the front, ABS off in the back. And then that light blinks to let you know that it's that way. That it's, uh, that it's altered from uh, stock. This bike also has the airbox removed and a Rottweiler intake. It also has a power commander unit on it. I love the way it sounds. How does it handle? It handles like a dirt bike. <laughs> It handles like a, a really fast dirt bike. So a lot of wind blast. I do have this little fairing here, but really that just adds shade for the uh, speedometer and tachometer. Without it, it's hard to kind of hard to read the uh, speedometer. Of course, you'd have to move this out of the way to read it. I can read it from my uh, trail tech a lot better if I just put that on the speed. But uh, how does a dirt bike handle? Well, 
and light steering, lots of suspension, so it moves around a bit. You got kind of dirt tires on it, so the bike uh, is not as stable as a street bike, but they're lightweight and they're really easy to maneuver and so the confidence is pretty high even though like when you see I was under hard acceleration once I got over about 70 miles an hour the bars under that hard acceleration the bars start to move around a little bit because that front ends barely on the ground they handle surprisingly well kind of all motorcycles handle surprisingly well um, you know they they're forgiving is is a good word it's forgiving when you go around corners the back sliding a little bit the front's moving around it just depends on the tires dramatic dependence on tires because um, these things can get really wobbly with uh, the wrong tires on them now, there is a gear indicator you have to go through the selection here to have a gear indicator but it's really hard to read because it's way down here where the odometer is see I'm in first gear here why am I going so slow? Because wheelies are fun. So that's second gear wheelie, right? But you pretty much pick your gear. Third gear wheelie. Easy, easy. You can do wheelies on this bike all the way up to about 70 miles an hour. Pretty awesome. So that's the hooligan part of it. It's a lot of fun. You can be hopping curbs. You can still go around corners really fast. If the road's really rough, it doesn't care. But to say it's a really good handling motorcycle is probably not the right thing to say. I mean, for a dirt bike, it does really well because it's 300 pounds versus 200 pounds. And so it's a bit more stable than say your full-on dirt bike if that makes sense bars are wide of course all dirt bike handlebars are pretty wide I, I like that I kind of like that on my street bikes too so more things I like the uh, seat concept seat is a good upgrade because you do ride this bike a bit more on the street, you want something a little bit more comfortable than the regular uh, stock seat if you're going to be riding long distance. And we do sometimes take these long distance in uh, Idaho on these things. And uh, that's, you know, 500 mile days on the pavement. It's a bit much on these bikes to do a 500 mile day. But, uh, but they can do it. And right back at with the uh, 250 could do that too so I would have no issues with the uh, 250 along with one of these your speed might just be a little bit slower in some cases but uh, mostly about the same you don't really want to cruise that fast on these bikes you know it's you're getting wind blast the whole time earplugs you definitely want earplugs when you're riding with this uh, a quiet helmet if possible is you're getting full force of the wind all the time. I'm trying to be realistic with a review on this bike because uh, I, a lot of people buy this bike for the wrong reasons. So why do I love this bike? I love it because it, it's one of my favorite bikes. Why would I have bought three of these things? So the 2015 I was in love with and then they had that Husqvarna 701 and it's a bit smoother. They put a second Callum counterbalancer in it they did on the latest version of this bike as well they share the same motor now and um, they put a different cam in it so on the 701 and the new 690 now uh, for 2020 the uh, they put a different cam so then um, it was going to be one smoother and then have a bit more power so the thing I didn't like about it why did I switch back and it was precisely that reason. That cam brought the RPM range for torque up about 500 to 1,000 RPM. And for trail use, I found that it was just a little bit high. I wanted the torque down a little bit lower. It makes it a little bit more playful at slower speeds, where the Husqvarna is a lot more playful at higher speeds. 
So on that Husqvarna cruising along at 70 miles an hour downshift to pop that front wheel up is like nothing. And it stays there for a long time because you've got another, I think, I don't know, a thousand RPM more in the rev range to keep riding that wheelie out. So for hooliganing, man, that bike is at, at higher speeds is a blast and it is a bit smoother. So on the freeway, the 701 is just a bit smoother than this bike. You can feel it in the bars. You don't. You feel more vibration on this bike. Uh, but I wanted that lower RPM torque and I didn't really care that it had a couple more horsepower because I was changing out the ECU or adding to the ECU programmer anyways. Um, so that was one major reason. Um, the other was cost. You know, I spent a spent $10,500 for my Husqvarna 701 and uh, I felt that I could get a 2016 KTM 690 for much less money. As it turned out, I had to go without a bike like this for, well, just over a year because I couldn't find the right one. I kept, for some reason, these bikes all hit the market at one time and then they're gone for a while. Then they all hit the market again. So for that year, year and a half, I just didn't see one that I that I wanted, and uh, the right around, I was looking to right around the seven thousand dollar mark is what I wanted to end up spending, and uh, I ended up getting this one, and it's a 2016. Had I think it's I think it's three thousand miles on it, two or three thousand miles on it. So uh, I knew the owner. Owner's awesome, super cool guy. Did a lot of the upgrades. Uh, super good on his maintenance. Um, he was kind enough to give me a, a buddy deal on the uh, bike, which was awesome. And uh, now I, I'm enjoying it and taking good care of it. Um, and that, so that's the reason I went back to the 690. Both awesome bikes. There's some pluses to the Husqvarna. If you're looking at a brand new motorcycle, and you want a 2020, take your pick. 701, 690, mostly the same motorcycle. If you're going back in time, say 2000, well, All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt myself here because uh, I start talking down, about the problems of a 2014 and older 2000. KTM 690 Enduro R and with a valve train issue, or it's a rocker arm assembly issue. And the newer upgraded version, which came out in 2015, and it had bolts that went through that assembly that held it in place. The older ones did not, and so after a certain amount of wear, they could start getting some, uh, they would start loosening it up, and actually the shims could fall out and into the motor and cause some devastating problems. About 10% of the bikes had that problem, so they did not create a, uh, they created a service bulletin, but not a recall for that. But the new parts are available, and you can upgrade your old one uh, pretty easily to that. I think it's about a two hour job, something like that. Not such a big deal. If you find an old one with uh, in good shape, good running order, uh, they say about 25,000 miles where that starts to happen. So uh, it could be safe, safe bet to buy an older, older one and save some money. The next subject was suspension and the suspension, the 690s uh, forks are awesome. The 701 came with their new upgraded uh, Explorer forks, which are a bit better, but both are awesome and a great, both great bikes. They take big hits. I can jump it. It can do big whoops. Everything seems to be fine. And really, if I wanted anything better than this, I'm going to go get my suspension custom tuned or custom tuned it myself. So, uh, so I'm okay with that. All right. Uh, some other differences between the bikes and the older ones is the frames are actually different. They're not the same. Uh, it's it's nothing you're going to notice riding the bike, but if I actually took the frame out of the KTM and compared it to the Husqvarna, they're they're just different. Um, I, I don't know why they chose to do them differently, but they are different. They're just a... Um, slight differences. Uh, let's see, the plastics are all different, the seats are different, so um, what else? Uh, it, you know, it, it kind of comes down to, for me it came down to that cam, and I wanted lower RPM torque, and so I wasn't going to buy a new one, and then another aspect of that was I didn't want to spend that much money on it, so I think they're 11,000 new 
you can probably pick them up for 10.5. Um, but uh, that's why I chose the 690. Hey, this, I could hear the fan. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. Uh, that's another upgrade to both the bikes, the KTM and the Husqvarna, that is a, a good one to make, and that is a new thermostat. Um, you know, it's a, they call it a fan switch. It's actually, it's, um, so it turns on the fan at a certain temperature, and they have it set pretty high. So uh, if you look up the part number, um, you can just buy it directly from the manufacturer who makes it for about 14 bucks. Or you can buy it from KTM for like uh, 80. I don't know. I might be mistaken about the 80. Maybe it's 40 bucks. But they're really, it's only about a $14 part. Uh, you just need the part number. I'm not listing it here. I'm not even going to go look it up. I have. A, I end up having a couple of them, but um, that's just you know something to look into. It's not a major thing, but uh, if you're riding hot weather, uh, it's good to bring that temperature down just a little bit, and it keeps it there really well. Uh, a lot of people change out the mirrors. The mirrors on this are changed out. They're changed out to something I can flop in when I go off-road so that I don't break off the uh, the mirrors. The stock mirrors I really like on the bike. You can see really well out of them. Uh, these are okay. They tend to move around a little bit more, but they're pretty good. They're solid. Fuel range is a big issue on these, on both the uh, Husqvarna and the 701. Although the newest... 2020 they added a little bit more fuel but I'm telling you it's like a tablespoon who gives a crap uh, it doesn't matter it's that that is not a game changer they needed to add another gallon of fuel not another half a quart so um, the thing is they just don't have enough range if you're gonna do some adventure riding on one of these you'll do one of two things you'll go to rad garage and you'll buy their uh, airbox removal kit with it's a fuel tank right where the airbox was and then they give you a new uh, filter um, and mini airbox to put on which is funny it actually adds horsepower which is kind of a and torque I, it's a, a really weird thing so you get a little bit more torque a little bit more horsepower which is totally counter intuitive to what you would think so it just must be the way they designed that airbox didn't provide any uh, any back pressure. So the new one, a little bit smaller, maybe it does. Anyway, um, so that's one way of doing it. You'll get an extra gallon of fuel that way. Um, the way I did it, is I carry a Rotopax. When I uh, do longer trips, that gives me well over 200. Um, our magic number is 220 miles. Uh, every trip we've done, there's been fuel stops right at 200 miles um, or before. Uh, with one exception, and that is our uh, our Mexico trip, and it's a bit further than that. Uh, luckily, there's locals that have fuel, and we know where to stop. Um, so with the Rotopax, I can make uh, 250 miles, no problem. Without it, there's no way. So that's a consideration. They also make external fuel tanks for the front of the bike that replace the... Uh, the uh, shrouds for the radiator I didn't like them they're just too wide and I, I actually just don't want to carry the extra fuel unless I need it and it's only on the really big trips where I need it so it's I put the extra fuel tank in the 701 and it worked just fine um, but what happened to me is I ended up just always filling both tanks and otherwise you're running around with the fuel light on a lot and uh, so I ended up just filling both tanks, so I was always carrying around more fuel than I needed. Uh, this way, I only throw the Rotopax on when I know I'm going to need it, and then I'm never carrying around extra weight. Anyways, that is the KTM 690 Enduro R. Boom. All right, guys, before we get into this video, hit that little subscribe button down there. You can like the video. You can hate the video. <laughs> Either one. You can uh, also get notified uh, down there as well, and it'll that little bell icon will get you uh, notified on some new videos we're going to be doing. And uh, But 
hit that subscribe button. It'll help me out tremendously. It's a small little thing, but it does help me out a lot. All right, thanks. Well, if you stuck around this far, you may wonder why in the heck, uh, what's the bad part? Why do people hate this bike? And it's not really that they hate it, but they bought it for the wrong reason. Uh, one of the buyers for this bike, and what I found is the most common buyer for this motorcycle came from their first motorcycle, which was a CRF 250L. Then they bought their second bike, and it was either the KTM or the Husqvarna 701 or the KTM 690 Enduro R. And what basically the same weight bike, uh, kind of set up the same way, kind of like a dirt bike, just more power. And it really is the wrong bike to move to for something like that. They have the same vibration going down the road as a 250, uh, maybe more. Um, they're about the same weight, yeah, but about three times the horsepower. And that can get really scary for a new rider. Uh, the other type of rider is a rider that has uh, a large bike. So say uh, I've seen a lot of Harley Davidson riders say, hey, they want kind of a dirt bike, but they can ride on the street. Uh, a touring bike rider, maybe on like a Goldwing or, you know, ST, um, something like that, right? Sport touring bike, and they want a dirt bike, but they want a big one, right? They want to be able to ride on the street. They want to be able to ride in the dirt, so they figure the 690 is the right one. I think their marketing kind of goes that way, too. Um, it's really not that type of a bike. For a dirt bike, it's real challenging. Uh, for a street bike, it's real vibey, right? So on the street, it has lots of vibrations, lots of wind noise. Uh, if you're used to a dirt bike, you understand what that is. If you've ridden a, like a KTM uh, 500 EXC, riding that down the freeway is absolutely miserable. Uh, lots and lots of wind, hard seat. It's a really lightweight bike. Well, these are a little bit heavier than that. So yeah, it works out better. Um, and that maybe be the right person to purchase this. And I think when you find those guys, it maybe came from a large displacement dirt bike they ride on the street, that this might be the right bike for them. But for the new rider, and this is their second bike, it always ends up being the wrong bike. And I, I see a lot of buyers that are selling these, and they their first bike was that CRF 250L. I swear to God, it seems like this is their second bike. And it's just so wrong in every way. Um, I just felt like it's a good idea to get that out there. It seems to be a, a large problem. Um, and these bikes change hands a lot because of that. The right rider, again, an experienced, maybe it's an enduro rider, somebody that wants a challenge, but they want to be able to ride on the street uh, what, and have more longer maintenance intervals than their KTM 500 EXC. Um, or even the CRF 450L, which has a little bit longer, but uh, these definitely have more of like a street bike um, maintenance interval, so that you kind of get that normal uh, kind of maintenance window. So for that reason, these are great bikes, and you do have, I say more of a challenge because it's a 300-pound motorcycle, uh, so it's more of a challenge, 100 pounds heavier than, say, your dirt bike. That helps you on the street helps against you on the dirt having this much horsepower on a dirt bike works against you in the dirt it doesn't really help you but it's a fun challenge too so if you're really good with your clutch really good with the throttle becomes a really fun challenge and it becomes a really rewarding bike to ride i think it's just that would be the right message to send to people that are looking at this bike rather than hey you know what you have a crf 250l move up to the 690 or the 701 it weighs the same i think that's a bad a bad uh way to look at it. Anyways, enjoy.